Hello. Good morning. Good morning. God's blessings to you on this Ash Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023. I, I posted there, maybe I should have put something uh, penitential up for our opening music there for uh, instead of the that little uh, Italian restaurant tune kind of thing, French. But it is Ash Wednesday today, um, celebrated in uh, Christian tradition. Um, the uh, the day begins the season of Lent, yesterday being Shrove Tuesday or Fat Tuesday in the colloquial. Um, it is a, yesterday was a day of, uh, that, that yeah, it, it's always confused me, I guess, maybe a little bit. Uh, that um, you're about to enter a season of Lent when you set aside, quite often people will, will fast, not necessarily from food, um, but but cut something out of their lives that um, represents, um, how do I want to say it? their dependency on things other than God. Um, I mean, the purpose of the, the purpose of, of fasting from something, whether it's food or uh, something else, uh, is to set those things. It should be something that is, uh, that, that you deem essential in your life that really isn't essential. Um, something that, that you certainly could live without, but you truly desire to have. Um, I know a lot of people that would uh, put off chocolate or soda, some people alcohol. Um, I've seen one now going around uh, that, that that is to set aside um, social media um, and, and, and the Internet, except that's become such an essential part not only of our personal lives, but of our work lives. So it would be almost impossible to do. Um, and I don't want you to do it because I want you to be here so we can spend time together. Um, and maybe you could set aside everything else and just have this. But um, yeah, and so so you're, you're about to go into this penitential period, mourning over our sin, um, our inability to uh, be faithful to God, uh, mourning over our sin, uh, desiring to do better, reminding ourselves that um, to dust, uh, from dust we came and to dust we shall return, um, that, that, that what we have in this world is fleeting. Um, and so you prepare for that in the days immediately beforehand by having a, a riotous binge of slovenliness um, and hedonism. I, I think that's a, I think it's a great way to get, you prove exactly why you need to have the time of, and potentialism. I, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's, I think it's just human nature. It's just human nature. So today, Ash Wednesday, um, during the 40 days of, of Lent, which do not count the Sundays. Sundays are, are, uh, um, uh, are, are in the Lenten season, but they are not of the Lenten season. Um, they are days still of rejoicing in the resurrection of Christ. Um, uh, Monday through Saturday, we mourn our sin, uh, we repent, um, we seek uh, to serve our Lord and to turn away from sin, death, hell, and the devil, um, and and seek the Lord's face and his kingdom. Uh, and then on Sunday, we rejoice that, that Christ uh, gave himself for us and has risen from the dead. So during the 40 days of Lent, God's baptized people cleanse their hearts through the discipline of Lent, repentance, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Almsgiving is uh, offerings to the poor. Lent is a time in which God's people prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, which is Easter Sunday, the Sunday of the Resurrection. Now, um, there's a whole other thing there between the Eastern Church and the Western Church, but we'll, we'll, stick, with, we'll stick with Sundays. Um, it is a time in which God renews his people's zeal and faith in life. It is a time in which we pray that we may be given the fullness of grace 
that belongs to the children of God. And so it does. Um, so today, Ash Wednesday, many of you will attend, uh, hopefully, will attend a, a midweek service of some kind. The old tradition was around the one o'clock hour. Um, used to be that um, all the businesses and, and such in town would shut down at noon uh, so that, huh? Yeah, it's it's not all that long ago. We're talking 15 years ago, maybe, um, where everything would just shut down and be closed for at least a few hours <clears throat> so people could attend worship. Um, usually part of that worship uh, at the beginning is an imposition of ashes upon the forehead um, for the purpose, for, for two purposes. One, the, the ashes are imposed upon the forehead of the of the penitent with the words, remember, O man, from dust you came and to dust you shall return. Um, reminding us of our mortality. Um, but also those ashes are put on your forehead in the shape of a cross. Um, so even as we remember uh, that in this flesh we are mortal, uh, through Christ we have already obtained immortality. Um, so kind of both sides of the same coin. That's one of the beautiful things about being Lutheran, um, confessional Lutheran, true. Not, not, not some of the other Lutheran that's out there, but Lutheranism that, that is, is bound um, by the scriptures uh, and, and, the, and the entirety of the scriptures um, and uh, the Lutheran confessions, the Book of Concord, uh, as it is a faithful explanation of uh, the scriptures. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, the, the joy in that is the, the dichotomy of things, the duality of things, just as Christ was God and man, and yet fully God and fully man. Um, we can understand and comprehend that we are born fully sinful, and yet Christ makes us blameless before God through the through this death and resurrection on the cross and the shedding of his blood. Um, so we are alive in Christ uh, and um, live to him. I am seeing something weird here. Bonnie, is this going out okay? Okay, I got to refresh my screen because it looks like I'm still on the on the hymn for the video. So anyway, yeah. Um, oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Things have just become desynchronized. So anyway, Ash Wednesday. Um, go hear the words. Quite often, the Old Testament reading is from Joel or Jonah, uh, speaking of of repentance. Um, the interesting thing is quite often that the reading from Matthew is used, which comes from the fifth or the sixth chapter of Matthew, um, which says, you know, don't let your don't let your fasting be seen by others or your uh, your mourning over sin be noted by others. But at the same time, you got to put that in the tune of Matthew five, where the witness of those things calls others to Christ. Um, so go, go receive ashes on your forehead. It is neither a command. Um, uh, 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 it is neither commanded um, nor denied. Uh, you have the opportunity to do so. Um, and I'm not saying you must go do it. I'm saying if you understand what it is and why you're doing it, then go receive ashes upon your forehead. Uh, for dust, from dust, for, for you, O man, from dust you have come, and to dust you shall return. And then hear the preached word. Uh, pray and receive his blessed sacrament for the forgiveness of your sins and the promise of eternal life. Um, so Ash Wednesday. Let's um, let's uh, see who's here, and then we'll get into other things. I'm I'm a little relaxed today because we've got uh, three or four inches of snow on the ground already, and more is coming. And um, my congregation here in Irma made the decision last night that for the safety of um, the members of the congregation, we would not have worship services or our Lenten meal tonight. I'm saddened by that, um, but at the same time, I understand the desire uh, the, the, to um, uh, discourage people from going out when it's not safe to go out. Um, I don't know. I'm, 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 yeah, and, and I'm going to take some uh, time as soon as we're done here to go finish the repairs I've started on our snowblower because 
somewhere between 10 and 16 inches are projected. I, I don't, I think we'll be lucky if we have five, to be honest, but I have been wrong. So let's see who's here with us this morning. I'm here. Um, didn't see, I was on another screen. I'm doing all kinds of other testing as we're here today, um, trying to figure out what the issues are that have been going on here with some of this stuff. Um, and so I didn't notice when we went live because I was on a different screen. Jeannie and Bob, good morning to you guys. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. A blessed Ash Wednesday to all. Mike and Karen, good morning. 87. I would say that's a little toasty. I hope the air conditioning is working in Moby there. I imagine it still gets cool at night, though, doesn't it? Renee, good morning. Bad weather in our forecast. You bet. Same as here. The snow we had last night is over by you guys today, although it looks like it diminished as it hit the lake. So one of the effects we've had going on here in the Northwoods is that the air has been so dry that when moisture comes up, it, 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 it dissipates into the atmosphere, raises the humidity level a little bit, the relative humidity, um, but it, it, it actually isn't... Um, developed enough to, precip to precipitate, to fall. So they say we're going to get all the snow, the snow moves in, the moisture goes into the atmosphere, and it dries it up, and it just dissipates. Moostock, good morning and good evening to you, Jill and John. Good morning up there in Rhinelander. And I don't think you guys got that much up in Rhinelander last night. It looked like, it looked like kind of the line on the radar pretty much stayed between Tomahawk and Merrill, just north of us. Uh, we were on the, I, I kind of looked anyway at 3 a.m., like we were on the very northern edge of, of what was coming. Ann and uh, Deb, good morning. Grand out snow blowing. Yeah, okay, three inches. Yeah, yeah. I, Wausau, I believe that. You guys got more than more than we did because the, the heavier part of the storm was south of us. Um, there's Bonnie. She's telling us it's 14 degrees with snow on the ground and deceptively slippery roads. And, and that's the kind of snow we had was the, it was so cold because it was in the teens that you don't get the big fluffy flakes that kind of pack down and give you give you traction. Um, we had the, the light little stuff that doesn't dissipate and it blows around. That's the problem is it'll blow around and, and drift significantly. Glenn, good morning to you. If you're driving anywhere today, I, I beg you brother to be safe. Uh, Jerry, good morning. Big storm. Yeah, all right. We are too. Connie and Robin, good morning to you guys. Boarding up the windows. <laughs> the equivalent of a Northwoods hurricane is the... Actually, they're talking 40 or 45 mile an hour winds tonight, so we'll have to see what that's all about. Verna, good morning. I'm going to refresh here and, and uh, see who else has popped in. I'm still not getting... Nope, Verna's the last one on my list, so all right. A little bit of coffee here. Checking a few screens. Processors are idling right around, oh, right around, uh, what's the current temp on there? Oh, I see, right around 70 to 60 degrees Celsius. So, all right, we're only, only drawing about, uh, uh, well, 34 watts of power on the processors. Wi-Fi is streaming out at, at uh, anywhere from 2 to 3 megabits, so that's good. All right. If you have the Lutheran Service Book, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, I have before me my treasury of daily prayer, and you probably can't see it because of the lighting, but I'll, I'll show you this. We're back at the front of the book. Um, the church year rolls over at the first of Advent. Um, but these treasuries and the, the daily lectionary that's in the hymnal roll over uh, on Ash Wednesday. So we're, we're done with Job. I thought we might be. We're done with Job. And, I, and I'd asked you guys if you wanted me to do, oh, Jill says two to three inches more coming late through tomorrow. Well, I, I, Jill, I think it might be more than two to three. I mean, they're, they're saying the total is supposed to be over a foot at least. So I would like two to three. That would be okay. Um Anyway, what I was saying is it rolls over on Ash Wednesday. I'd asked you guys if, if you wanted anything special uh, for the season of Lent, and no one responded, and I didn't make any decisions. So I'm just flipping the book back. We have done today, as of today, we have done um, 
a year of the Old Testament readings from Ash Wednesday of last year um, through through the church year and back to Ash Wednesday today. We've gone through all of the Old Testament lessons. So since I started this, and I started it in, I want to say in April or May of 2020, back when I was still in Michigan, um, we have gone through the New Testament readings here in the Treasure of Daily Prayer twice, and we are beginning now. Uh, and, and then uh, last year, 2022, we did the Old Testament readings. So um, I think what we're going to do is we'll just go back to the New Testament again. The readings assigned here in the New Testament, we'll go through each one of them. Um, unless some creative thing comes into my mind or one of you out there suggests something to me, um, we'll just continue to, to work our way through the treasury each day. However, um, for the season of Lent, in addition to my ramblings, which are particularly long today, I apologize, relaxed, you know. I think I'm still going to have catechism class, though. Um, we, uh, I'm, I'm going to have the writings. I'm going to share the writings during the season of Lent that are in, in the, daily, the treasure of daily prayer assigned for, for each day. Um, yeah. Well, no, we don't get the Old Testament off. Well, you know, we could do the New and the Old Testament. We'll just make this longer. Um, no, I think I think we'll just go with the New Testament for the next year, or maybe maybe we'll pick up a book. I don't know. I'm I'm open to suggestions. Like I said, um, what? Well, we'd be starting over with the Old Testament. Well, we'd be starting over with the Old Testament. I'm getting a lot of help from the nut peanut gallery today. All right. As as I was saying, or at least today we're going to do the New Testament. Maybe we'll figure out more later. That's two votes, I guess, for doing more in the Old Testament. <sighs> you guys can't hear her. I can. Um, I'm going to start miking her and put a camera on her, and that'll fix that. Let us, again, page 295 in the uh, Lutheran service book, or uh, blah, 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 blah. daily prayer for individuals and families in morning order. I have my treasury here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And for some reason now, all of my processors have just jumped to 100%, and we didn't change anything. Um, OBS is working a little harder. Let's sort this way. No, nothing is burning it up, but I, it's time to do a refresh on this computer. All right, back to the business at hand. Our psalm today. Psalm, why is my keypad not working? Everything's falling apart here. Um, psalm 136, verses 1 through 9 on this Ash Wednesday. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, say it with me, for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, are you saying it with me? For his steadfast love endures forever. To him who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now, let's see if this works. There, now, now it worked. There we go. Our reading today, New Testament, 
Mark 1, chapters 1 through 13, um, on this Ash Wednesday. Mark begins this way. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with whom, with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, couple things here. I, because I know the Greek, um, I'm always a little offended by the translation of what is verse four here. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming, and, and that's good, a baptism of repentance um, uh, for, the, for the forgiveness of sins. And uh, the, the Greek does not say that. Now, it's not entirely different, but words mean things. And, and what, the, what the Greek says is that John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance into the forgiveness of sins. Um, or no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, pause. Pause. No, I... Scratch that. I got to come back to that. I, I, I'm trying to remember. Well, all right. Now you did it. Now I'm getting out the Greek. You did it to me. It's your fault. I'm blaming you. Boy, if I thought my computer was loaded down before. Um, I got to set the screen sharing up again, too. I haven't done that since OBS changed how they were doing it. Come on. Show up on the screen here. Where are you? There you are. You're hiding behind everything else that I have up here. Minimize that. Go to Greek study. Oh, then we're here. Go, go, go back over there. I want you over there. All right. And we want to go to Mark. One verse four. And again, I told you on it's about Tidzon, N T, Ereno. Oop. Yeah, Eremu. Kai Kerusalem. Okay, so that's it, that's in 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 uh, and so John came baptizing in the uh, in the wilderness and pr proclaiming. Uh, John the Baptist came uh, ba proclaiming a baptism. Uh, Proclaiming a baptism genitive. Yeah, okay, okay. So a baptism of repentance. And then ice a face in amartium. Now, that doesn't mean a lot when I say it to you, but but ice is not for. Ice is into. Yeah, I had it right. Bapti uh, proclaiming a baptism of repentance, a, a turning away from sin and towards God into 
forgiveness of sins. Into forgiveness of sins. Not, uh, uh huh. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. Yeah. Um, not, a, not for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus' baptism is for the forgiveness of sins. But John's baptism is into is, is for repentance, leading to the forgiveness of sins, which comes in Christ, not through John's baptism, but through Christ. So that's that's just a picky thing on my part. Um, but all the country of Judea and Jerusalem, okay, not all of them, but it, you know, it seemed like it. There were a lot of people coming out, going to him and being baptized in in the River Jordan, confessing their sins. And we don't know. We don't know if John was dunking them or if he was pouring water over their head or if they what, what was going on there. We just know that he was washing them with water, which is what baptism means. And here's what John was clothed in, camel's hair, uh, a, uh, with camels, a camel's hair cloak, uh, a leather belt around his waist, which is the same way that Elijah dressed. And this is the, the dress of the Old Testament prophets. So we we John John the Baptizer is is an amazing prophet because he is an Old Testament prophet proclaiming the New Testament message. He is a continuity between what was in the Old Testament that God had done and what is in the New Testament. He's he's taken the Nazarite vow from his birth. Uh, he has not cut his hair, touched strong drink, been around dead things, um, and has been a servant of God all this time eating locusts and wild honey, the uh, Eco World Economic uh, Federation would uh, appreciate this since they're now um, preaching that we should eat uh, flowers made from crickets. Um, eating locusts and wild honey. That, the healthy diet, though. Uh, preaching, proclaiming God's word, saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I. The strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. Um, he, I am baptized with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Not two different things, right? In the baptism of Christ, when God places his holy name upon you uh, through the hands of the pastor, the pastor being not the one doing the work, but the hands that are carrying out the task that God has given, um, God delivers to you not only his name, making you his His holy child, uh, but also delivers to you into you his holy spirit, uh, creating in you a new creation, a new heart, uh, taking your stone heart uh, that refuses to repent, uh, breaking it and making it a fleshly heart uh, that aches for the forgiveness and life that Christ gives. And so Jesus comes down and He's baptized by John in the Jordan. Mark doesn't mince words here. He just gets it done and came up out of the water and sees the, uh, the heavens being torn asunder. Uh, and, and the spirit in the bodily form of a dove comes uh, and settles upon him. And God says from heaven, the father says, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased for Jesus will, will and has done the very will of God. Uh, he is faithful even to death on the cross. And the Spirit drives him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. And, and, and that's how we start our Lenten fast. The church did not always celebrate Lent. Um, there was always some kind of recognition and preparation before the Paschal Feast, before the resurrection service. Um, it started off as... as uh, three days, and then it extended to a week, and and eventually, uh, you, you, things are done for th liturgical things are done for theological reasons, not for no reason at all, um, and and eventually, uh, Lent um, became tied to the forty days of Christ's suffering in the wilderness before he before he commences his ministry, and so uh, Lent became a forty day practice not counting the Sundays, again, because the Sundays are not in Lent. Um, all of this, all of this in the season of Lent is to point us to Christ, who uh, the Son of God, the Son of Man, gives his life for us upon the cross to bring us in to the forgiveness of sins. Let's look at the writing that we have for today. It's, it's from the small called articles. I guess I should set up a 
a button that I can put uh, what we're reading from here on it. And I'll do that for tomorrow. The small called small called articles are part of the Book of Concord. Um, they were a series of articles written by Luther um, after the Augsburg Confession and its apology. <coughs> there was to be another diet, another meeting, council, <coughs> wherein um, the Lutherans were going to present a more complete confession of their faith, and they'd asked Luther to write this. Um, his, his elector had asked him to write this. Um, it was never presented, but it is included in our in our in the Book of Concord, the Confessions of the Lutheran, Ch Lutheran Church, because it is a faithful exposition of what we believe, teach, and confess from the Holy Scriptures. So here, uh, small small called articles um, must be section three, part three, uh, sentences three through six, or paragraph three through six. It's kind of legal there, but here. Uh, so Luther writes, this is what true repentance means. Here a person needs to hear something like this. You are all of no account, whether you are obvious sinners or saints, in your own opinions. You have to become different from what you are now. You have to act differently than you are acting now. Whether you are as great, wise, powerful, and holy as you can be, here, no one is godly. But to this office of the law, the New Testament immediately adds the consoling promise of grace through the gospel. This must be believed. As Christ declares, repent and believe in the gospel. Mark 1, Mark 1, 15. Yeah, so that's coming up. That is, become different, act differently, and believe my promise. John the Baptist, preceding Christ, is called a preacher of repentance, but this is into the forgiveness of sins. That is, John was to accuse all and convict them of being sinners. This is so that they can acknowledge what they are before God and acknowledge that they are lost, so they can be prepared for the Lord to receive grace, and to expect and accept from him the forgiveness of sins. This is what Christ says to himself, or this is what Christ himself says, sorry. Repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in my name to all nations. And that's Luke 24, verse 47. So from the Schmall called articles of Luther, let us continue this morning then with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And I was looking for the Ash Wednesday prayer. Um, hmm. This little prayer book does not have prayers for the days of the church. For the Holy days. Let's check this little. They look. They look kind of alike, don't they? Um, let's check this little prayer book here. I should have set this up ahead of time. Uh, prayers for morning and evening. Prayers for my life of worship. Prayers for use in the church year. Ash Wednesday, page sixty-two. Here we go. Uh, well, all right. Page sixty-two. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, we come before you sprinkled with ashes of sorrow, robed in sackcloth of repentance and humbled by our fault, by our own most grievous fault. We slept when you urged us to watch. We sought comfort when you urged us to pray. We followed, a from, we followed afar off when you wanted us to be near you. We betrayed you when you were bearing witness to the truth in our, on our behalf. We fled when you assured us that our only safety is in you. Lord, we are deeply involved in your passion. We need only look at your disciples to see ourselves. But the important thing is that we see you through bloody sweat. You prayed to do the will of the Father. You drained the cup which we filled for you. And now there is not a drop left for us to drink. For this, we humbly and heartily thank you and pray that we may live continually in this gratitude. Help us to watch with you in your passion, that we may remain awake to the infinite power of your love. This in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon those who suffer in body, mind, or soul. Especially this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Ann, Breanne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them comfort in suffering and always the assurance of eternal life through your Son by the forgiveness of sins. He who is Christ our Lord, in his name we pray. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our Ash Wednesday, Wednesday devotion to a close this February 22nd. God's peace be with you. Again, I encourage you, um, What's the other? There's a word for that's stronger than encourage. Um, charge you to go to church today if it's at all possible to receive the blessings of Christ who gave his life for you as we enter this season of repentance and mourning over our sinful nature, rejoicing that Christ has saved us from sin, death, and hell by his death upon the cross. God's peace be with you, and we'll see you back here tomorrow, Thursday morning, rain or shine, for our daily devotion. God's peace.